The Haruna and Shurana class destroyers had a unique place in naval history. Besides, their story tells much about the evolution of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Forces or shortly JMSDF. Today, we're investigating the Haruna and Shurana classes, the only real helicopter destroyers. The Haruna and Shurana classes were the last step before the JMSTF had the Hyuga and Izumo classes, which looked like aircraft carriers rather than helicopter destroyers. They were created according to the tactical requirements of the JMSTF, but also the political and economic challenges that Japan had to face shaped them. The story of these four destroyers goes back to just after the Second World War. The tension between the Western and Eastern blocs quickly arose immediately after the Second World War. So, the USA, which began to need a stronghold in the Pacific, permitted Japan, which had been disarmed in 1945, to have a maritime safety agency in 1948. In 1952, this so-called paramilitary force planned to have an escort aircraft carrier for anti-submarine warfare, shortly ASW missions. The JMSDF was founded two years later and some Japanese delegations visited the USA to negotiate transferring one SX-class ship. However, Japan's plan to acquire aircraft carriers would be a significant burden for the budget. It also caused tension in many other pro-US countries in the region due to the bad memories of the past. So, Tokyo cancelled this plan in 1959 and decided to build conventional destroyers in large numbers with the same money. However, Japan kept working on an indigenous command-capable helicopter carrier. It would carry 18 Sea Kings, not fixed-wing aircraft, and operate three rotorcraft simultaneously. Japan also considered a 6,000-ton patrol ship equipped with six helicopters. However, the study showed that the existing helicopters were still too primitive to perform ASW missions effectively. Besides, the international community was still against the Japanese fleet with a carrier, and the ship would be too expensive for the Japanese defense budget. So, once again, Tokyo terminated the program and decided to build lots of cost-effective conventional destroyers. After a while, new technological advances, such as the Bear Trap helicopter haul-down and rapid securing device and fin stabilizer, made it possible for destroyer-class ships to carry effective ASW helicopters. In 1967, the JMSTF conducted operational tests of the Bear Trap system on the JDS Shiretoko landing ship and the fin stabilizer on the JDS Otori submarine chaser. The results were successful. So, in the same year, the JMSDF initiated a reorganization plan. According to this plan, it would form escort fleets, each with one helicopter destroyer, five general purpose destroyers, two guided missile destroyers, and six to eight ASW helicopters. The initial intent was to build carrier-like 8,300-ton helicopter destroyers capable of carrying six helicopters. Again, this intention was blocked by the reaction of the countries and region and budget restrictions. So, Tokyo had to settle for a hybrid surface combatant with a large helipad at the aft, which had been a popular design since the late 1950s. In 1957, France and Italy ordered the first helicopter cruisers of the world, Jean d'Arc, and Andrea Doria. Later, Italy built the larger Vittorio Veneto. The USSR followed them and commissioned two Project 1123 Condor class helicopter cruisers, whose NATO reporting name is Moskva class, between 1967 and 1969. Besides, the Royal Navy converted two Tiger class cruisers, HMS Blake and HMS Tiger, to helicopter cruisers between 1965 and 1972. The new ships of the JMSCF, called Haruna class, would have similar sizes and aviation capabilities to the Italian Andrea Doria class cruisers. Still, Japan defined them as helicopter destroyers since the term cruiser might cause anxiety in the international community. The first ship of the class, JDS Haruna, was laid down on March 19, 1970, launched on February 1, 1972, and commissioned on February 22, 1973. Her sister, JDSCA, joined the fleet one year later. We should say that the early naval ships of the JMSDF had the prefix JDS. 
in 2008, it was changed to JS. We will continue with the JS from now on. JS Haruna and JS EA were the first helicopter destroyers in the world. In 1978, the US Navy also initiated the DDH-997 program, a helicopter destroyer version of the Sopranos class. But later, Washington cancelled the project. So, the Haruna class and its successor, the Shrana class, would remain as the only helicopter destroyers. The Haruna class had a full-length knuckled hull to accommodate the helicopter deck which occupies the aft third of the ship. The Haruna class was fitted with two 5 square meters fin stabilizers to increase sea keeping capability for helicopter operations. Due to the hangar design, the max structure, combining the radar masts and the exhaust stack, was shifted to the port side. During the sea trials, it was seen that the exhaust gas flowed back into the starboard intake due to the turbulence in the airflow. So, JS Haruna was fitted with an additional structure on the starboard side to prevent this. Besides, during our construction, the funnel of the JSCA was raised 1.5 meters and a large exhaust port was integrated at the rear. The Haruna class had a redesigned main machinery configuration, significantly improving fuel efficiency at the combat speed of between 20 and 26 knots. The helicopter deck was 50 meters long and 17.5 meters wide. For a conventional surface combatant with an aft helipad, the time between landing a helicopter and taking off another is generally 20 minutes. On the other hand, the design of the Harana class allowed one helicopter to be parked at the front and another to take off and land at the rear, reducing this time significantly. The destroyer also had the Canadian-made Bear Trap helicopter haul down and rapid securing device. The JMSDF deployed the HSS-2 helicopters on the ships first. Later, the Haruna class operated the more advanced HSS-2A, HSS-2B and SH-60Js. Initially, the destroyers had an 8-ton crane installed above the hangar to retrieve the Sea King from the sea. However, even though this helicopter had a boat-like hull, it could not land on the water if its rotors did not rotate. So, the JMSTF quickly realized that the air operations based on retrieving the Sea King from the sea were impractical. Between 1983 and 1985, Japan modernized JS Haruna and JS Hiei, which increased their displacements by 250 and 350 tons, respectively. JS Haruna was equipped with the OYQ-62 combat management system, while JS Hiei was fitted with the OYQ-7B2, which gave the destroyers the Link-11 data link capability. One of the two FCS-1A gunfire control systems was replaced by FCS-212 while they kept their SFCS-4 underwater fire control systems and the OQS-3 bow-mounted sonars. The original OPS-11B radar of the Haruna class was upgraded to the C standards with the moving target indication capability. Their OPS-17 surface radars were changed with the OPS-28 surface and OPS-20 navigation radars. The Haruna class, which initially had the NOLR-5 electronic support measure equipment, was fitted with the NOLQ-1 electronic support measure electronic countermeasure system, the OLR-9B radar warning receiver, and four Mark 36 Surbach countermeasure launchers. The destroyers were also equipped with the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow surface-to-air missiles and Mark 15 Phalanx close-in weapon systems. The complement of the JS Arena was 370 people. The destroyer had a length of 153 meters, a beam of 17.5 meters and a drought of 5.2 meters. Her standard displacement was 4,950 tons, while her fully loaded displacement was 6,850 tons. Two Mitsubishi-made boilers and two Mitsubishi-made turbines provided a 70,000 horsepower output in total. Her top speed was 31 knots. Unlike the JS Haruna, the JS Hiei had a 370 person complement and Ishikawajima made boilers and turbines with the same power. The Shrana class helicopter destroyer was an improved version of the Haruna class. It was the largest destroyer of the JMSDF until the Congo class. The first of its class, JS Shrana, was laid down on February 25, 1977 launched on September 18, 1978, 
and commissioned on March 17, 1980. The JMSDF took JS Krama into the service one year later. The hull design of the Shirana class was the same as the Harana class, but it was 6 meters longer. This change reduced the wave distance, allowing the ship to achieve 1 knot more speed with the same engine power despite the increased displacement. The overall width has been kept the same to ensure stability. Still, the two destroyers of the class had bigger 8 square meters fin stabilizers. The bridge of the Shirana class was enlarged to accommodate the addition of the electronic equipment and was expanded from 3 to 4 floors to strengthen command and control capabilities. Due to the additional radars and electronic equipment, the destroyer was fitted with two MAC-type masts to prevent signal interference, one on the hull centerline and the second shifted to the starboard side. The helicopter storage arrangement of the Shirana class was reversed compared to the Harana class. It also had a smaller crane with a lifting capacity of 5 tons. The helicopter deck was 46 meters long and 17.5 meters wide. The Shirana class had the Prairie Masker blade rate suppression system to reduce acoustic signature. The destroyers had the OYQ-3 tactical data processing systems, which made them the first Japanese surface combatants with the Link-11 tactical data link capability. Yet, this system had no weapon control feature. In the late 1990s, the QYQ-3 was updated to the B standards with the weapon control capability. The Shirana class destroyers had the OPS-12 3D air search and OPS-28 surface search radars and the OQS-101 bow-mounted sonar. They were fitted with the same electronic warfare system and countermeasure launchers as the modernized Harana class ships. The complement of the JS Shirana was 350 people. The destroyer had a length of 159 meters, a beam of 17.5 meters and a drought of 5.3 meters. Her standard displacement was 5,200 tons, while her fully loaded displacement was 6,800 tons. Two Ishikawajima made boilers and two Ishikawajima made turbines provided at 70,000 horsepower output in total. Her top speed was 32 knots. Unlike the JS Shirane, JS Krama had a 360 person complement. The Harana and Shirana classes had the same armament. They had two 127mm 54 caliber Type 73 naval guns, the Japanese licensed production variant of the US Mark 42. It had a rate of fire of 20 to 40 rounds per minute and a range of nearly 22 km. They had two 20mm 6 barrel Mark 15 Phalanx close weapon systems with 4500 rounds per minute rate of fire and about 1,500 meters effective range. The destroyers were fitted with one Mark 29 octuple launcher for the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missiles, whose range was 14.5 kilometers. The maximum speed of the semi-active radar-guided Sea Sparrow was Mach 2.5. The Harana and Sharana classes carried 16 and 24 missiles, respectively. They had one Type 74 octuple launcher the Japanese version of the US Mark 16 for the RUR-5 ASR torpedo-carrying ASW missiles with a range of 10 km. These destroyers also had two 324mm triple-tube torpedo launchers. Except for the accidents in 2007 and 2009, the Harana and Shirana classes had incident-free careers. They only fought against the Godzilla. JS Harana and JS Ye were decommissioned on March 18, 2009 and March 16, 2011, respectively. The Hyuga class helicopter destroyers replaced them. JS Shirane and JS Krama were decommissioned on March 25, 2015 and March 22, 2017, respectively. The Izumo class destroyers replaced them. Yet, we should accept that their successors are not real helicopter destroyers. They are carriers disguising under this definition. Only the Harana and Shirana classes were the real helicopter destroyers, which make them unique. These four ships were the last step before Japan's dream of having an aircraft carrier came true. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.
And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.